The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. Dear brethren, the greater instruction from truth, what we can learn. There is no truth in this world apart from Bible doctrine, the Theonustas, the God breathed, the information given for us by the mentor ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, so that we, the believers, can believe after believing our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the doctrine of Christ. If you don't grow up to believe in the doctrine of Christ by learning from the examples of the Old Testament, and neither if you are capable of understanding the doctrine of the mystery realm of this church age, your life is a pseudo life. Your life is a lie. We have great lessons to be learned why we are living a life that is of a lie. And Jeremiah 10.3 till to the following verse of 8 teaches us the contrast between the palm tree erect made by self-made man God and the doctrine of Christ which is so true. The self-made man God is a symbol of stock which is nothing but doctrine of vanities. But what do we have? We have doctrine of truth, doctrine of Christ. And this doctrine of Christ which has been used can be understood in several ways. We have a great lesson of instruction given for Isaiah as well. In Isaiah 8, 11 through 13, the great controversy which we need to learn. The strong hand which came upon Isaiah and instructed him. The strong meant to say, which is a prevailing power. And the hand which has been used, Yad in the Hebrew, has several meanings. But the general connotation of it is to take the possession, the power. Now we have the prevailing power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, given for each and every believer. And the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which teaches to us to have this instruction, which is nothing but so great of God's discipline reformation. Whenever God disciplines through us for the instruction, there will be a greater reformation. We can find the example of this Protestantism which came around in the 1533 by the reformation movement taken by Martin Luther, Zwingli and Calvin. Exactly whenever God disciplines, there will be a greater, greater, greater reformation. And that will be a true doctrine of Christ. If there is no reformation, then take it granted the word of Agar, which is meant to say, you are speaking the words which are worthless. That is what we can look upon into the subject of Matthew chapter 12, which we have noted in one, of our, in one of our previous tapes. Dear brethren, the instruction which our Lord gives with the prevailing power of that great possession of us, that is what Lord God the Holy Spirit temples it is. And it is Lord God the Holy Spirit who should, who sh who should definitely control us and take not only just control, it has to take the entire possession of your soul and train you up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. If this process of soul training is not being done for you properly, then take it granted, dear brethren, you will never have the discipline of God to be properly instructed. And Isaiah was being told of the great power to teach to those people the reality of to sanctify the name of the Lord, because for he alone is our fear, for he alone is our dread. But the time came when we can look the origin, why exactly the truth got perished into the realm of Jeremiah when he comes in Jeremiah. 230. He says that no correction has been received. And furthermore, in Jeremiah 5.3, he writes, Lord's eye are always upon the truth. But this people, they have made in Jeremiah 7.28, the truth to be perished. And in Jeremiah 7.23, the reason he says, because they made their neck as stiff hardened, so that they should not hear, neither receive the instruction of Christ. Furthermore, we have a great conclusion in Jeremiah 32, 33, which tells to us they turned back and they turned back not their face by showing to the Lord. And though it is a great grievous pain for our Lord, it is for our Lord to send 
early and rise the teachers and he taught them up early and teaching is the methodology for them as well but they're not heard nor to receive instruction the same thing is happening today as well in our church pulpits many of the people that turning back towards the mystery doctrine of the church age but they are not able to come and show upon the face of bible doctrine and learn the true mystery doctrine the prevailing power which has been given for us the mentor minister of lord get the holy spirit at the moment of salvation by faith alone in christ alone but then too we are not able to look and in isaiah 53 5 we have a chastisement that our lord died even for these false teachers as well but this chastisement which we can look further in Hosea 5, 2 and 7, 12, which tells to us they have been rebuked by our Lord, but they have not been corrected. Our Lord chastised them, but they could not come. And in vain, they, our Lord said, I have smitten them because they are children who received no correction. Though your own swords, you know, they have destroyed your prophet this is what it is happening but the chastisement for us in Isaiah 53 4, 5 was for our peace we can have that peace only when we are in the truth and why today in this Christendom of the church age we are bearing the stock of doctrines which is of vanities upon vanities where will be the peace when there is a vanity of doctrine in your soul being circulated we cannot have that peace you need to know the origin from Jeremiah 2.30, which says they have not received correction, they have not received God's discipline. But we have in Isaiah 8.11 saying that our Lord's hand was very strong. And it instructed him, strong means prevailing power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, what it has been given for us. Then it was endowment, now it is enlightenment. And the hand symbolizes possession, the power. And the instruction means always to get reformation, reformation, reformation. And where is our reformation today? To give back number one priority for Bible doctrine. To teach in our pulpits the sophisticated spiritual life. To teach with the methodology of ice concept. To teach with the methodology of dispensations. And you also want to perish like the people of Jeremiah prophets. That is left to you all. If you are following still the methodology of this heathenic style, which our Lord has chosen you as a peculiar people not to be like these heathens, not to be walking as unbelievers walk, which has been alienated from the spiritual life of Christ, says Ephesians 4, 17 through 21. They are darkened in their souls. Matthiosis has been filled. What? Vacuum. Vacuum is vanity which does not get. And you know very well, sowing to the wind, reaping war wind, when the prophet doesn't have the word of the Lord to teach. So long back in Jeremiah, that these prophets sow to the wind, in Jeremiah 5, 12 and 13. Today's Christendom as well, Without the true knowledge of Bible doctrine, without the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, without the original languages of Scripture in your hands to handle it accurately, to take in and polish in each and every word, the Hebrew word Musar, which refers, which refers to doctrine, you need to learn how the doctrine will be developed into the realm of Jeremiah, the great lessons of the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, communicated through those prophets long back. And why are we not able to get in, into our soul? The only reason is we have not given the prevailing power to take complete possession of our soul so that we can give the true reformation when we go through the disciplinary act of God. The instruction which has been given to Isaiah in Isaiah 8, 11, he took it. And he went to prove the sanctification of the Lord in Isaiah 8, 13. Because Isaiah knew when he was being learned under the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, that our Lord God alone is our fear, that Lord God alone is our terror. And we need to sanctify his name. Since today many believers have failed to look this principle of sanctifying the name of our Lord, because for real on is our terror, for real on is our dread. They have really left 
the true principle and the integrity of the work of a pastor teacher. And as long as they fail to work upon the principle of pastor teacher, they will definitely not heed the instruction, but they will turn back their face. And they will turn back, though our Lord has taught them rising early and sending teachers, they will not receive, because they hearken not to the correction. So in Jeremiah 2.30, no correction received. Though Lord's eyes upon the truth, they don't want to sow in Jeremiah 5.3. In Jeremiah 7.28, the truth has been perished. And in Jeremiah 17.23, the reason which has been perished is they have made stiff neck. So that they might not hear, nor they might have received constructive, received correction. And we have a great lesson in Jeremiah 32, 33. They are not hearing so that they should receive instruction. And our Lord said, in vain I have been smitten them, because they have not received any correction, though the prevailing power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, has given for us. Even we are not receiving the instruction. So, dear brethren, think over these issues as such where you want to go. If you want to be rebuked, if you want to endure chastisement, if you want to look upon the things as our Lord told, sowing to the wind and reaping to the whirlwind, you will have a tough time. Though you may be popular and rich in this world, though you may be great enough in, in this earth by acquiring great wealth, but in the sight of the Lord it is zero, zero point zero zero, whether you believe it, take it or not. So, dear brethren, think over these issues as we shall continue in the next day. Father, grateful for the privilege that I was given to fellowship with the word. Help us to stabilize ourselves in the Musa or discipline of thy word. And to be teaching the commandments of God rather than mandates of man. So that we shall be a true workman of thy hand. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.